All right, what's up guys? I'm KBHD here and welcome to Dope Tech of CES 2018, part two. So if you missed part one, I'll link it up here in the corner. That's clickable in case it got missed in the flood that is your sub box right now. But I did go back to the show floor with your suggestions from Twitter and Reddit to find the things, mostly I guess the more newsworthy things of CES that people wanted to know more about. So right off the bat, actually, there were a couple of things that I wanted to see that I couldn't. So Synaptics, for example, they were demoing a fingerprint reader underneath the display glass. I'll link this video that I'm watching below, but I think this is actually gonna have some pretty sweet implications in smartphones as early as this year. So I'm looking forward to that, but I didn't get to see it in person myself or try it out. I hope I do soon though. And I also wanted to see, but they weren't showing it in their booth, LG's rollable TV, probably the most hyped thing of all of CES, I'd say, this whole year. So they had this rollable OLED TV. Basically, it looks like a normal TV when it's out of the box, but it has these motors and it's flexible and it rolls into this box that they had when it's not in use. So I guess it's really modern to be able to completely hide your TV like that. Uh, but the other use would be partially rolling it down to make it this 21 by nine ultra wide aspect ratio for watching those videos or movies with no black bars, or even rolling it almost all the way down for this mega wide UI they built in that just displays the weather and stuff. So I thought that was really cool. I wish I got to see it in person, but they took it out the booth or wherever it was pretty quickly. Trust me, I asked about it. Um, but from what I've heard, this may actually come to market and be a product we can buy sooner than we think, like this year. But for stuff I did see at CES, it was kind of your classics. It's, it's your cars and your TVs. Uh, they could probably name this the Cars and Electronics Show and nobody would even bat an eye. Most of the dopest TVs I saw were pushing the envelope with resolution and size. So, you know, anyone can make a 45 inch OLED TV at this point that's relatively thin and beautiful, but some of the insane ones at CES were things like Samsung's 146 inch modular OLED display. Sony had a massive 85 inch 8K HDR display blasting 10,000 nits of peak brightness into our eyes, which was really impressive. Stuff like this, again, is crazy cool to see. And of course, we hope it will show up in much lower prices in real products in stores in the future. And then in the car department, there's always lots of cars at CES. And then at the height of those, it's a lot of what I guess I would say like the Faraday future concept EV autonomous type of thing going on. Like take Byton, for example, brand new, probably the number one most hyped new electric car at CES and it checked all those boxes that Faraday Future and others have checked in the past as well. They had that single fully working prototype in their booth, check. A massive, potentially distracting, but still really cool display behind the steering wheel, replacing the traditional dashboard, check. Uh, they had the lack of door handles, of course, check. Uh, a lack of side mirrors, but with cameras instead, check. And of course they won a Best of CES award without announcing a price or a release date, check. I mean, that's not to say this isn't a super cool idea, this concept, uh, it's fun to see this type of stuff at CES, but I would avoid giving these, I guess, too much hype like I have in the past where they're not actually a real product yet. But on the surface, they're awesome and they're everywhere. But basically the important thing to remember with them is that word concept that you'll probably see on it somewhere. If you look up the word concept, it's literally just like a, a physical representation of an idea. So a concept car is not a real product yet. I don't think we have a, a price. We have a target price, but we don't have a release date. You can't buy it yet, so. It's more of a we'll see. But what I did see that you can buy right now, and I'll link it below, is the Matthias keyboards. What they're doing is basically what we wanted Apple to do. Right now you can't buy a space gray wireless Apple keyboard unless you also buy an iMac Pro. So Matthias is basically making that keyboard that anyone can buy. Plus there's some other colors, so I'm pretty pumped about that. And then on top of that, they're also making a wired and wireless backlit version of that keyboard. So the wireless backlit version is just on or off with white light only, but the wired version has a literal physical wheel on the back for changing through whatever colors you want at any time. In my opinion, that is dope tech. Uh, I also saw this sort of a cine motion controlled arm in the Nikon booth. So I've seen sort of stuff like this before, but never in person. This one was called the Mark Roberts motion control Bolt and the Bolt Junior, two different sized robots. And I kind of want one. <laughs> it's essentially a robot arm that's computer controlled that you can program camera moves into and you can do all kinds of crazy, fast moving, super steady stuff that human hands could never do with a camera of this weight. Uh, so it was giving me all kinds of ideas for tech videos, but I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, Panasonic kept up their tradition of having a Tesla in their booth, which was probably pretty useful during that power outage. Yes, there was a power outage at CES, the biggest electronics show in the world, 
lost power. It's gotta love Vegas. And there were also robots everywhere. Robots to clean your house, robots to help you out with stuff, robots to dance for you, robots to keep you company, robots to play Scrabble against, and robots to beat you at ping pong. Or if you're decent, to actually help you get better at ping pong. I got to play against it. It's it's really uncanny seeing it like toss the ball up and serve it. That was probably the most human-like part. Uh, but for real, it's using AI and it's essentially getting better as I get better. I mean, I'd say I'm pretty decent at ping pong. I'm not great, but when I had good longer rallies and started hitting back a little faster, the robot started putting a little more heat on its returns too. So that number it's projecting on the net while you're playing is like a sort of a player rating of how good you are based on how fast you're hitting back and your spin and how hard it is. But that also means the robot, as it's playing you, is gonna play you at that level too. So for the record, I got up to about a 93 out of 100. I'm not bragging, but I thought that was pretty sick. And uh, then once I took the lead, I had to quit there. Also, Huawei Mate 10 Pro may have overtaken Red Hydrogen 1 as the most hyped phone of 2018, at least from what I saw in my timeline. I think you'll know what I'm talking about. It's been kind of everywhere. So I think I'll have a little review slash rant about this phone coming up if you're interested in that. Also, the US Postal Service had a booth at CES where they were showing off mail innovation. Mail innovation. Me mm. Anyway, that's pretty much it. That was my CES 2018. Obviously, it's a huge show. You can't possibly see everything, but I hope these dope tech videos gave you a good idea of what it was like to be there and some of the stuff we saw. Uh, I had a lot of fun, and I guess the wait is on now for seeing if the things we saw there actually come to fruition. I mean, I'm sure 75% of the things that were there won't, like the electric cars, tough to say. Uh, Project Linda from Razer, I would almost bet money it'll never actually happen, but we'll see. But you know, that rollable TV it might actually come sooner than we think. So until then, thanks for watching. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>